When people drive at safer speeds, it reduces the number of crashes and their severity, improves safety for people walking and riding, and helps to support better placemaking. What? What? Placemaking. What are you talking about? Fresh merch alert for the Skyline fans, R34. Check it out in the full booth shop. We can't have bench talk without us ragging on barras, RX-8s, and uh, more importantly, electric vehicles. Surely you got some pearlers in there. Oh, we've got some climate cookers in here. My two month old EV is currently back at the dealer service center where it has to wait for a replacement for the charging module for the 12 volt battery as it failed. Let's stop right here. What is it? You bought an MG without telling me you bought an MG. <laughs> I'm told the wait will be six to 10 weeks. It's a pretty major inconvenience. In the meantime, they've given me an ice car, ice loan car to drive around. Even with this inconvenience, the experience of owning and driving my EV has been so much better than driving any ice vehicle I've ever owned that there is no question in my mind that my next car will be an EV. So you've got no wheels at all. So apparently that's better than owning the dreaded ice car because of um, global boiling. The worst part of this experience isn't that I was stranded for hours waiting for a tow or that I am without my car, but the worst part is still that I have to drive a clunky ice vehicle in the meantime. I'm above you. Better then. Well, hang on, hang on. If it's so bad, why are you driving it? Look, like, don't, don't worry about being stuck on the side of the road. So why aren't you just not driving the ice vehicle and just walking? You're driving that ice vehicle around, which means... Failure to care about the environment. You're contributing to the climate emergency. How, how dare you? Humans are to blame. You should just exactly get on your push bike. Come on, on your bike. Australians have been early adopters of practically every new technology since forever. Well, that's, that's, okay, that, that's right. well worried. Look at all the bogans getting around in souped up electric scooters. Ah. I haven't actually noticed that many, but how long do you think it will be take them to discover a stock base model MG4 has more power than a mm. V8 Tirana? <sighs> Boy. So a current car has more power than a car from the 1970s. Yeah, we've always wanted a Tirana, you know. It won't be long before the only people buying ice are cookers and eccentrics. Cookers. Holy pressure cooker! Jordo, are they saying that a 253 Tirana is lacking a bit of grunt? Alrighty then. The old thong slapper. I don't know about you, but when I go out on the street, there's just holding Tiranas just left, right and centre, isn't there? With all these bogans with mullets hanging out of them. Riding, apparently, electric scooters. Yeah, man, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Full Boost Garage is now offering Vic Roads Club Permit Registration for vehicles of 25 years and older. The great news is it's only a flat rate of $75, but if you're a member of Full Boost Garage, we're gonna drop that to $50. For more information, jump on our website, fullboostgarage.com.au. Have you seen this disgusting new tech? Ford researching tech that snitches on speedsters to the police. No, no, no. The patent proposal would turn every new Ford on the road into police eyes and ears. <laughs> the same company that once sought to patent self-repossessing self -repossessing cars and then let that application expire has a new idea to employ tech in a manner most drivers probably won't love, titled Systems and Methods for Detecting Speeding Violations. Let's start with the obvious. First of all, most of these patents ne ne never hey, go. Hey, hey, I'm not finished yet. It seemed that only a miracle could stop the bloodshed. Describes a way for Ford's vehicles to measure the speeds of nearby cars using cameras and sensors and then potentially report these violations to the police. Well, I understand it's a bit over the top, but it's what we need to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. All right, first of all, most of these patents never go anywhere, and this is great clickbait. Even if we say it's clickbait in the video, there'll be comments, you guys are putting up clickbait. Yeah, of course we are. Catastrophic. It's a great way to uh, sell cars, isn't it? You gotta realize most people buying cars are complete Karens and would love this tech probably. I don't know, they were speeding. Cars would constantly be gathering speed data of surrounding traffic using radar or LIDAR. Been driving around these streets for fucking years, mate. Never mind done. If a particular vehicle is determined to exceed a threshold speed What's limit. That? So what happens when the 40 turns into yeah. the 30? I admit I was speeding. Whether this would be a posted legal limit or otherwise isn't decided. What do you mean, what do you mean otherwise? It's a legal limit or not. What, so you're doing 50 in a 60 zone and they go. 
You're fucking joking. Well, for the conditions today, we've decided that you're going too so fast. So, if Karen in front of you is doing 20 under the limit and you pull out and just cru limit, which is cruise no, around it. Australia, Luke, hmm? going on on-ramp, 40 under the limit is the norm yeah. now. On the on-ramp, trying to come onto a freeway with these losers. It would then switch the camera on and begin recording. It would also determine one or more identifying features of the second vehicle. So what does that mean? It scans the number plate. To generate a, a record that may help authorities find it. From there, the data would be sent to additional connected monitoring devices and or the police, and it's up to the latter to determine whether to pursue the offending speeder or not. And to ensure that what keeps us safe will also keep us free. This guy's got the right comment. It's like automakers have forgotten that good customer relations is how they sell cars and stay in business. S snitching and subscriptions to what should be owned features just make people not to want to buy a car. That's pretty true. More of a reason to own a 90s Honda. Well, there's better cars than 90s Hondas. I'm sure this will be as well received as the BMW seat heater subscription. Now, did that seat heater subscription actually come to fruition or was it always... I thought it... I thought a it rumor. did, and hearsay. Was it actually real? Did they backpedal? I can't remember what happened with that. <laughs> the plan to charge you $18 to use your heated seats already in your car wasn't received particularly well. Now BMW hitting reverse <clears throat> on that plan. Wasn't Orwell's book supposed to be fiction? The Fourth Amendment protects against unreasonable searches and seizures, which could be inter interpreted to include continuous speed monitoring without a warrant. It's an infringement on your constitutional rights. <laughs> Ford can't even design a good vehicle these days. Assuming they could ever get this to work correctly is laughable at best. I wouldn't uh, say that, but... Ford needs to address the quality issues and recalls, re recalls that are plaguing them instead of finding new ways to deter the remainder of their customers. If they can get that tech working, buddy, it'll be in the car, I can guarantee it. Anything to make cha-ching. Oh yeah. And speaking of snitching on people, this news from the ACT will hardly come as a shock. For our overseas viewers, Joy, the ACT is the uh, where all the uh, politicians reside, you could say. It's the cesspool of Australia. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. I'll tell you one thing though, it's amazing when you go to the ACT, there's no potholes. Roads are perfect. Come down to uh, stinking Victoria, where we've got no money, my god. Be prepared to buckle a wheel. Speaking of potholes, complete segue, did you see Waze Navigation introduce potholes? I was driving to Full Boost Garage, by the way, the other day, through the back way, and it would just say pothole in 430 metres, as soon as it got to about 120, eyes on the road, yep. And, and I, was, I was in a bit of traffic, so you didn't see the potholes until you were almost on them, and it picked up a few shockers. Like, I avoided ones off. Uh, like, they were about a foot deep. It's just a standard pothole these days. The roads were absolutely terrible. I went past one this morning, taking my daughter to basketball. I'm not joking, it was a crater. It was like they've been doing um, a nuclear testing in the middle of the road. That's how big this crater was. You know, when you look at it and go, that just didn't happen overnight. Drivers fined following dash cam upload to police. 25 drivers have been fined as a result of dash cam footage uploaded to ACT Police's policing's online reporting portal since the program began in May. Back in May, we expanded our online reporting capability to include dangerous driving, providing the community with a new mechanism, total buzzword, to report poor driver behavior. So basically, snitching. Importantly, this allowed people to upload digital imagery of illegal driving behavior. So far, 132 online dangerous driving reports have been received by police. 25 drivers have been issued traffic infringement notices. 35 drivers issued cautions or warnings and six matters continue to be investigated. Offences included not stopping at red lights, not giving away, tailgating mobile phone offences and careless driving. So this is the same people who are probably uh, snitching that you went outside your 5k COVID radius or were seen dead, dead walking the footpath without a um, gas mask on. Same people, yeah, surely. Some of the incidents on that video, there are some absolute idiots, you know, running like some pretty bad red lights, right? But you just wonder where they'll stop. Like, are they gonna, are they gonna get people for uh, sitting in the right-hand lane? Hell no. Somebody didn't indicate. Better go report that one. Driving a BMW. ACT policing won't do anything if your car is stolen, but they'll make sure the public can do their job for them. 
This is turning into Cole's uh, self-checkouts, is it? Got to do that job. Don't get me on my high horse about that rubbish. <laughs> wow, isn't the government getting enough revenue that now you're booking people off dash cam? Well, don't worry about Big Brother watching. They've convinced Canberrans, is that a word, is it? Canberrans, to become dibber dobbers. Canberrans. Canberrans, Jordan. Canberrans. Insert comments on how safety is everyone's business. I look forward to uploading footage of right-hand drivers on the roads above 80. Jordan, let's just stop right here. Now, if you're not doing anything wrong, you've got nothing to worry about. Nothing to hide. I've got nothing to hide. If you've speed, that's your problem. I mean, I personally have never done one kilometer over speed limit. If it's a 60 zone, I'm doing, I'm doing 60. And if I did, if it did 61, I take full responsibility and I deserve every punishment I should get because without looking at the speedo 24 seven, I know exactly what speed I'm doing. In fact, what I do is in a 60 zone, I just do 45. And then when I get to a, uh, a, a known red light camera, the right thing to do is to slow down to 25. Because if I slow down to 25, there's no way I can get booked doing 60. That's the state of driving on our roads these days. Well, you've got to slow down. Slow, to, slow down from 45 to 25 in the 60 zone, thinking it might go orange. And you want to collect as many orange lights as you can and stop. You want to get as many red lights as possible. You don't want to be going through green lights, ever. The other thing you want to do when you're on the freeway, and I'm going to get off one kilometre, we're going to drop to 70. Because, you know, we need to cruise at 70 for a kilometre before we hit that, I don't know, 600 metre off ramp because we've, we haven't got that much room to slow down to, from 100. So we'll just do 70. Just, just get a, a nice big queue going. Jordan, I think you better insert old man yells at clouds here. I'll yell at as many clouds as I want because uh, the state of driving in Australia is fucking shit out. <laughs> Jordan, speaking of people driving slow, have you seen what's going on in Sydney? I mean, this is hardly a surprise, this is it Australia? Did the speed limits ever go up? Cars get safer, speed limits come down. Sydney speed limit dropped to 40 k's and it could go even lower. Lower? Hey, they've got to compete with uh, Melbourne's Yarra City Council here. What the, what's going on here? Within weeks, speeds on all local and regional roads across Sydney will be capped at 40 k's an hour. What? In a bid to make the city safer. What are they talking about? They're talking about speeds nah, in the city. It's the city of Sydney. I mean, everyone says it's ridiculous. I'm like, go and drive the Yarra, city of Yarra in Melbourne. The local speed limit there's 30. Unacceptable! I was in there last week, Geordie, and I was doing 30 down this main half street thinking this is absurd. When people drive at safer speeds, it reduces the number of crashes and their severity, improves safety for people walking and riding, and helps to support better placemaking. What? What? Placemaking. What are you talking about? Placemaking is the name we give to projects that improve how we feel about and how we use our public spaces. It's a no from me. Not only will our streets be safer as a result of these important changes, they'll be quieter and have less exhaust emissions. Ah, oh, here we go. It's all part of the global boiling agenda. The earth is unbreathable. Great move, at least in the right direction. 30 kilometers an hour. The magic speed where pedestrians are more likely to survive an impact than not would be even safer. What? At what point do you need to slow down to say where everyone's safe? I was going barely 15 k's. Oh, I clocked you before the lights. You were going 80 in the 40 zone. How hard is it to cross the road? I don't get it. Hey. Like a, a, we're talking about a, a, side, a side street. Prioritising car movements over people's safety in urban areas is a thing of the 1950s. If you don't see me again, it's because I'm dead. Well, why don't you just get rid of the roads? If you don't want to pri prioritise car movements, why have you even got roads? Just leave them in the garage and ride your bike everywhere. It's because everyone is driving a US pickup truck. That's a bit of MD, MDK, Luke. Murder, death, kill. You know when you've got like, um, like the 10 pins, the, the, three, the three year old uh, kids lined up, like 10 pins in the middle of the road? What the hell are you talking about? You, you, can't, see, you can't see them when you're driving a US truck, so you're just going to mow them all down. Everyone's dead. Say that again. Everyone's dead. Look, lowering speed limits. It's probably someone from Canberra. Wanker. Lowering speed limits reduces car crashes, thereby reducing insurance costs for road users. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your premiums are going to go down because that's what they've been doing. Yeah, sure. Look, lower speed limits are not about revenue raising. So they continue to remove pedestrian safety onto the car driver instead of the onus being on the effing pedestrian like it should be to begin with, 
If you're dumb enough to walk in front of a moving vehicle, then you're dumb enough to get hit. The dumbing down of society continues unabated. The Brando's got what plants crave. It's got electrolytes. Does any of this surprise you, really? Think the best thing you could do in Australia is honestly just get out of the city. Two decades ago, only 5% of the council's roads had a limit of 40 k's an hour or lower. Now three quarters do and more will be added within weeks. The executive director of what? Business Sydney said more consultation was needed on the council's pursuit of 30k speed limits. 30. You know what's always the case when all this happens, Jordy? No one is ever consulted. Like the council just make up their mind without actually doing any consultation of what the residents want. It's just like, oh, we'll do this. We'll just implement this rule because we know best. Well, then if they get pushed back, they say, well, we did a consultation. They do it anyway, so. The point is, I'm... No, they do the consultation after they've made the decision. I don't know how I went into this whole story. 